Good Sunday morning. We welcome you to the Grace Union Evangelism Program. And we're so glad that you've tuned in with us this morning. And we're glad to be here uh, to minister the mighty Word of God to you. And we're thankful for you for turning tuning in to us. And uh, we hope that you don't tune us out. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, we praise God today for another wonderful, beautiful day that He's given us to wake up this morning. And as His Word says that every morning we wake up in the new mercies of the Lord. And I'm so thankful for that. The night is gone and we've wakened to another new day. Hallelujah. That we can live for the Lord and, and love Him and serve Him and worship Him. And God is so good and we're so thankful for all of His goodness and His mercy, His grace, His love towards us and kindness and compassion. Uh, Brother Donnie, we could go on all day. But uh, we just, uh, there's no words in the vocabulary Amen. to give the description of who God is and what He is. But my Bible tells me that God is love and that's yeah. enough. That's His nature today. And I'm thankful that we serve the mighty, most high God, the gracious God, the loving God, who loves us enough that He commended His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, yeah. Christ died for Amen. us. He sent His Son to this earth and take our place on that old cross at Calvary. And I'm so thankful that the, the one that was just died for the unjust. And I'm so thankful today to be saved and born again. Amen. And I'm washed in the blood of the precious Lamb of Amen. God. And I tell you that the day that He saved me, He made a glorious change in my life. And uh, there's been times in my life that I've strayed away, i wandered away, and i failed Him. But I'm so thankful that in His love, He would reach down, and He would send that restoration, uh, and He would pick me up out of that mire pit, and He would set my feet on the right path. And I'm so thankful every time that He does that, I come out stronger Amen. than I was when I went down into that pit. Hallelujah. And today, He can do for you what He's done for millions of others. The power of God has not diminished no matter how many years has gone by. Time does not diminish the power of God. He is as strong today as He was back in the days of the book of Acts, as He was in the days of the Gospels, as He was in the days of the old prophets. God is still God. He's the unchanging God. Now man has changed and man has tried to change things, but God is still the same today. And the Word says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and the same today, and He'll be the same tomorrow and the same forever more. And we love Him today and we praise God. Hallelujah for all His mighty good deeds and works that He's done. Amen. I want to say today, I, I appreciate uh, my brother Donnie Jesse over here. And I uh, tell you, he's, uh, he's just a wonderful brother in the Lord. I guess, Donnie, there's no words I can say to describe what you mean to me. Hallelujah. I and, thought you were going to say describe me. Uh, yeah, well, that <laughs> might be true as well. But I praise God, and I, I uh, appreciate him and Brother Nick Fields last Sunday filling in. And, and uh, my wife and I, we got away uh, over the weekend. We went down to Georgia and got to be with our good friends, the spirituals, as they sung and some other groups. And we had a great time Amen. in the Lord down there and such a mighty move of the Holy Spirit down in that service. And so uh, my wife and I just got to get away ourselves for uh, just today, and we came back uh, Saturday night and got in kind of late, and, and we got up and uh, came to church. Uh, I didn't know uh, how we would be getting up to come to the radio program, but I'm thankful for good brothers that came and filled in and ministered the Word of God, and, and I appreciate them so much. And I uh, love Brother Donnie, love Brother Nick. Love all my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to say this morning, we we are sending out our prayers, and we wholeheartedly mean that, sending out our prayers to the family of Rose Irvin, yeah. who yeah. went home to be with the Lord this past week, and we had such a wonderful home-going celebration uh, Friday afternoon, and uh, appreciate uh, uh, getting to minister and work with my good brother Robbie Perkins over here, Pastor's Edmonton Worship Center, and we had a great time in the Lord. And, uh, and I want to say we pray for all of this family. And little Miss Kennedy, uh, Rose's Amen. daughter, we lifting her up in prayer. And she got up and said a few words at the service. 
And I tell you, I was so proud of her. And she got up and done what many adults could never do. And she said it and, and uh, got up and spoke the words that God laid on her heart concerning her mother and the memories and uh, the good times that they had Amen. and uh, how the Lord had blessed them. And so we're sending out our, our, our prayers to that family. And I know God's going to bring them through mightily. I want to say it today that if you don't have a home church to attend, we invite you out to Grace Union Church. We're located 3611 Subco Road right here in Edmonton, Kentucky. And we're going to have a great time in the Lord today. And, and somebody say, hey, you know, well, because we've been praying for a mighty move of the power of the Holy Ghost to sweep through. Uh, and so I believe God's going to do it today. And uh, we invite you to come out and be with us if you don't have a home church. If you do have a home church, we encourage you to be there and go and serve the Lord and, and serve Him in spirit and in truth Amen. and worship Him uh, and in purity of your worship and, and be prayed up when you get there and geared up and equipped before you get there. And uh, the song, old song come to my mind this morning on the way to the radio station. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And I just want to uh, encourage you today to be prayed of. Don't wait to get to the church house to receive something. You can receive it before you get there. Yeah. And uh, if you'll pray and get filled with the Spirit before you get to the meeting, uh, the, the service will be just the icing on the cake. Uh, and so we encourage you today, get somewhere in the house of the Lord now. People say, well, as long as I'm in church, as long as I'm going somewhere, as long as this one's going. Well, let me say this. I understand that when people say, I understand what they're saying, but it does matter where you go to church because it matters of the gospel that you hear and it matters the truth that is being preached. And so today be praying that the Lord would lead you to the right place where the Bible is preached and the word of God is going forth from the platform and that the word of God is being preached in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And so the anointing doesn't mean that the preacher gets up and runs everywhere and jumps and shouts or he's loud or he's quiet. That's not what the anointing is gauged by. And so the anointing is by the word that is preached. And if it's the truth, because if you'll hear the truth, the word of God says, Jesus said the truth shall make you free. And so the truth will set you free from bondages. And so today we invite you, if the Spirit of God is leading you out to grace union, come out and be with us. Uh, our Sunday school begins at 10 o'clock. Our worship service begins at 11. And tonight, this evening, we'll have our Sunday evening services at 530. And then Wednesday night Bible study at 630. And so come out, be with us. And uh, we have a children's program. Young people on Wednesday night, come out, be with us. 630 every Wednesday. And Excuse me, and we'll, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. All of these services will come out and be with us as we grow in the Lord and grow in the strength of His power. And, uh, and want to say also, March the 12th, we want you to mark your calendars. We're going to have our night of gospel singing March the 12th at Grace Union. And we have the Kellys from Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, and the spirituals from here in Edmonton are going to be singing that night. And you need to mark your calendars. Be with us that evening. Amen. We're going to have a great time in the Lord as we lift His name in song. And uh, two of some of the most anointed singers. And you will be blessed. I guarantee you when you come that night. That's March the 12th at 530. Come out that Sunday evening. Be with us. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Also this Thursday evening. I'll be ministering at the church in Canberra. And uh, for a men's meeting. So come out and be with us, all those in that area and the areas around. Come out and be with us. We're going to have a great time in the Lord Amen. Thursday night. That's going to be at 6.30. All these times we're mentioning are central time. 
That's Thursday night at 6.30 at the church in Canmer. Uh, this Thursday night, come out and be with us. All the men that are around, come out and let's get equipped and strengthened in the Lord and the power of His might. Amen. And uh, we want to say we love you today. All of you that are listening, we love you with all that we have. Our whole heart's desire. We're not here preaching for fame. We're not here preaching for popularity or fortune. But we love you and care for you enough that we come by this way to minister the mighty word of God. That you would be helped. That you would be strengthened. You would be encouraged. That you would be convicted. That you would see the way of God. That he has laid out the pathway. And we love you today. We appreciate your hunger for the word of God. We appreciate you. Your, appreciate your zeal and your passion for the kingdom of God and all the churches around today uh, that are here that are going to be gathering and assembling today and all the preachers and the pastors uh, we're praying for you today and we 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 have no jealousy whatsoever. I'm glad when God created me and, and even ever since he saved me, I've never had a jealous bone in my body. Too much jealousy in our churches today. And Satan would love, he has such a passion, Satan does, uh, to try to tear the church apart and tear the church down. Uh, and so he would love to step his foot into our services today in all the churches uh, and try to cause schisms and divisions and set up partitions in the church and calls folks to turn against one another. But today we need to stand in the power of Almighty God. And we need to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. The Bible tells me that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that's when God will raise up the standard against him. My friend, that standard is Jesus Christ today. And the Bible says we're more than conquerors through him that love us, loves Amen. us. And nothing can overtake us. Nothing can overcome us. The powers of darkness cannot overcome us. No matter how great they may be, our God is greater. And the power of God is so much greater than that of the power of Satan. Amen. And Jesus has defeated the powers of Satan. Jesus disarmed the powers of darkness at Calvary's cross today. And we, you and I, are overcomers by the blood that he shed Amen. that day. The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so when Satan comes in, the church needs to rise up and begin to declare the testimony of God and the power of God, how he's worked in your life, how he's changed you, how that he's transformed you. Satan needs to hear your testimony. And those in the church today, there's many that's never even testified. They claim to be saved, but they never testified. They never publicly got up and talked about the goodness of God and testified of the Lord. And let me tell you something, testimony is good. It'll help you, it'll help those around you, and it'll it'll call Satan and all of his forces to flee when you begin to get up and testify in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And today we need to get up. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I love him today. And I worship Him and I praise Him because there is none beside Him and no one has ever done for me what God has done. And I love Him today because He first loved me. Hallelujah. And we love you today because of that wonderful love. Brother Donnie, you got a testimony or word this morning from the yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to say, uh, uh, also, I appreciate all those that listen. Uh, to us each and every weekend, yeah. every Sunday, we appreciate everybody does. Yeah. And uh, of course, I got a couple messages this morning, a couple of our yeah. listeners, uh, uh, and I want to say hello to, to a couple of my grandkids, baby Sissy and Do. Papa loves you. Yeah. Uh, that's what said that's listening. Uh, Cecil's listening this morning. We yeah. appreciate yeah. him. Uh, well, but, I, I will stop you for just a second. I am to say this, and and uh, I heard it this week. You're going to be a new. Grandpa. I'm going to be another new grandpa. Yeah. I'm a papa. Papa. I'm going to be another new papa. Uh, little Levi, he's yeah. going to have him a little brother. Yeah. Uh, done got his name, Jesse Lee. Jesse oh, Lee my. Harris. So yeah, you always keep them in your prayers. But you know, as I was out there uh, uh, waiting this morning, I got Lord kind of just pop some scripture in my head over in a uh, very familiar scripture over in the book of Mark. 
Yeah. Uh, in, uh, in chapter 4, verse 35, it says, And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in his ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves uh, uh, beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Oh, and he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Yeah. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Yeah. And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? You know, as I was reading this scripture, uh, I got to think, you know, so many people are so focused on the storm that they're going through, right. are so focused on the water coming in the boat, they get so focused on those things that they forget that Christ is on board with us. Amen. You know, as you look at this bit of scripture here, he led them to this. He said, let us go. You know, he didn't say yeah. he, was going, he was going by himself. That's he right. said, let us go to the other side. Amen. In other words, he was letting them acknowledge and tell them right off the bat, yeah. I'm with you. And you know, that's what we need to realize no matter what we're going through in life. Jesus says, I am with you to the end of the earth. And I'll, say, I'll be with you always. He says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, baby Thank brother. God. I yes. mean, he is there always with us. Yes. And you know, as, we get, as I said, we get so focused, you know, when the water starts coming in the boat, it's all right to have the boat in the water, but when the water starts getting in the boat, that's yes. another story. That's right. But you know, we get so focused on those things and, and it gets to wonder, you know, why, why? You it was to test their faith. That's right. This was what the whole purpose of storms that we go through in life test our faith. They strengthen our faith. Whenever we realize, you know, we should be rejoicing through those right. storms because we know that Christ is on board yeah. with us. That's, That's right. why he said there, you know, why are you so far fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Yeah. And you know what? And once, once Jesus got up and calmed that storm. Yeah. You see in that last verse how amazed that they were at the yeah. power of Christ. Yeah, Let me tell you, church, that's why we go through those things. That's right. Because that's right. when we get through it on to the other side, yeah. we get to wonder, you know, how good it was. Yeah, how good Christ is that yeah. he was there with me to help me through that situation, yeah. to help me through that trouble, that that's trial, right. to help me through all the problems that we go through in life that he hasn't forsaken us, Thank but he is you. there. And I thank God today that he's always there, no matter what we face. And yeah, I hope and pray that you realize that too, that Christ is right on board with you. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Thank Just you. trust Christ. Amen. Now, the idea we 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 soon forget yeah. the promises of God. Yeah. And we soon forget the Word of God because of our natural man and yeah. our weakness in our mind, and and we soon forget. In Jesus, they had forgotten. Now, this this wasn't the words of an ordinary man. This was the words of Jesus. He didn't say we might make it to the other side. He didn't say that. It, it might be a good possibility we'll make it. Right. He said, get in the boat. We are going yeah, to the other right. side. And if Jesus said you're going to make it, then you you're going to make it. That's what faith is, taking God at his word. Amen. You believe, you trust in the word of God, and you take him at his word. And uh, you're right, Brother Donnie. Uh, everything we go through is a test of faith. Mm -hmm. And God uses those things to to build us up and to grow us. Right. And uh, and people need to remember, and uh, it come to me here just not that long ago, I was studying in, in the Word one morning, and and uh, I came across, and I never had really looked at it that well. I'm sure I had, but it had never really spoke to me yeah. in such a way as it did this particular morning. And Peter said, the trial of your faith. Yeah. And many times we think that, we're the ones going through the test, and really we are in a sense. It's us, we're the vessel. Mm -hmm. But it's not us that's on trial, it's our faith. Our faith. That's and right. Peter said in First Peter chapter 1, the trial of your faith being much more precious more than gold or silver. Yeah. And those gold and silver and gold has to be tried through the fire yeah. to be purified. Sure. And God has to put us through the fires of the trials 
that we would come out purified. Our Amen. faith would be a purified faith. Amen. And Amen. I guarantee you for every single person that goes through the trial and goes through the test and they make it out on the other side just like these disciples that were in the boat. When they got on that other side, they, they understood that Jesus even had power over the elements of the earth and that how could this one could even speak not even just so much as raise his hands, but he, by the word that he spoke, uh, he had power and authority yeah. over the elements of the yes, earth. And the disciples, no doubt, uh, for a season of time, that they would slip back off into a place of doubt over and over again. But for a while, they, they marveled at the power of Almighty God. Amen. And so uh, and there was a little while that they were stronger than when they was when they got in the boat. And they were stronger when they came out uh, mm -hmm. on the other side Amen. after they come through the storm. And that's what God wants to do is mold us and make us to be what He desires for us to be. Amen. And we would be a witness and a testimony yeah. upon this earth yeah. of the power of Almighty yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, I appreciate that word. I needed that word this morning. And no doubt, everyone that's listening needed that word. And I look around, so many are struggling today. And so many yeah. are going through storms. And so many are being beat down by the winds and the waves that are around. Yeah. But today, I want to say that if you'll hold on to God's yeah. mighty hand, Amen. you will make it through. That's the, not a promise coming from me. Oh, and I'm not trying to uh, just be a... Uh, an advisor and a counselor that tries to build you up and encourage you by just natural means, but I, I want to by the word of God that you will make it. You, you'll come out if you'll just hold on in your faith and maintain your faith in what God can do and not what you can do and not what anybody else can do and not what mama can do or daddy or, or anybody, the pastor or anyone else, but what God can do and I promise you, you'll make it out. Uh, if you hold on to Him and pray your way out, hallelujah. Amen. And you may pray and think that God's not hearing you, but He does hear you. And God is hearing every word you said. Oh, Daniel kept on praying for yes, 21 days. And every day he would pray and he would think that God wasn't hearing him. But on that 21st day, God sent a messenger and said, I heard you from the very first moment you prayed. And so God will hear you and he will answer your prayer. And today, wherever you are, and you may be down in that place of despair and that place of discouragement and you may be down distressed and oppressed and depressed but today if you look to the heavens yeah. the psalmist said I will look to the hills from which comes my help meaning I will look up because I know my help is from above Amen. and today if you look up to the Lord he will help you Amen. and he'll bring you out and he'll break the chains that may have you bound and we're going to have a time of prayer right now before we get into the word that God has given us today. And as we pray, don't just rely on us praying, but you Amen. pray. And I've said many times that there's only one qualification to pray. And that's to be born again. You don't need a doctorate degree. You don't need a, a, a anything else to, to, to be born again to pray to the Lord. And if you're not saved today, uh, God will hear only one prayer that you pray to Him. And that's the prayer of repentance. And if you're not saved today, we encourage you. Yep. As the Word says, consider your way today. Yep. And Amen. today, if you've not been saved, time is running out. There's only one entrance into the kingdom of heaven. And that you must be born again. And Jesus said, I am the door. Yep. And so today, you must come through that door. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And today, if you'll call upon Him in repentance and ask Him for forgiveness of your sin, the Bible says that He's never casted one out. He's never turned one away that would call upon Him. And you may say, well, I've been too bad, and I'm in an awful place right now, and I'm an awful sinner. I mean, it don't matter how bad you are and how bad you've been. That's why Jesus came and died that awful death and became the sacrifice.
sacrifice for all humanity Amen. that we would be saved from the vilest of sinners even to the least of sinners Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost he didn't come to call the righteous but the sinners to repentance and let me tell you, a lot of folks think I need to clean up before I come to him. Yeah. No, you don't, you you can't clean yourself up. Right. Hallelujah. But when you get saved, God will clean you up. Amen. And when you get saved, God will take away the liquor bottle. Yeah. When you get saved, God will take away the drugs. Yeah. Because when you're saved, you have such a transformed heart uh, that you have no desire for those things anymore. And God will put a new heart within you. Uh, he'll give you new desires. Desires. He'll give you a new walk and a new talk. And why don't you trust in Him today and believe upon Him and let the Lord change your life. Amen. And right there where you are, if you've got sickness or pain in your body, we're going to believe in faith with you today and agree in faith. Our faith touching us, whatever that it might be today. Amen. And we believe God can do it. Hallelujah. He's the God that still heals Amen. today. He's the God that still believes. Delivers. Glory to God. And he's the God that still saves. He's still on the throne. Amen. And right Amen. now as we pray, you call out to him, Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name of your Son, Jesus, our mediator, our advocate, our representative in the heavens. And Lord, we come before you today recognizing you in all of your holiness. And how it be thy name. And Lord, as you told us to pray thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and we believe that your will here on earth God is for those that are bound God by whatever that it is that Lord they would be set free and Lord today we ask you in the name of Jesus that God you would move upon every situation of those that are listening today as those of your children that are calling out to you right now. Lord, many that are heartbroken, many that are weighed down by the cares of this life, and many, Lord, that are that are troubled in their heart. But I'm believing today, God, that you are able to do all things and that nothing is impossible for you. And Lord, I'm asking you today that, God, you would move upon every situation, touch every heart, Lord, that is listening today and God I pray above all for those that are sin sick those Lord that have never made that great decision and that step of faith to call upon your name and be born again Lord I pray right now that the convicting and drawing power of the Holy Spirit would begin to move upon their heart and life and Lord I pray that they'll find a place of repentance and God in their bow their heart to you and seek your forgiveness realizing Lord they've transgressed your law your way and they've transgressed and trespassed Lord and not only that but God they have sinned against you and all of their sin is directed towards you but God today you are the forgiver of sin and you love us so much Lord and Lord you sent your son that by his blood that he shed Every sin can be washed away. Every heart can be cleansed, God, by that precious blood. And today, Lord, we ask you to touch those that are on the bed of affliction. Maybe those, Lord, as Brother Donnie talked about, their faith has grown weak, Lord. But we pray today, as the disciples prayed, Lord, that you would increase our faith, God. And, Lord, that they would find, Lord, faith that God... Lord, it would move the mountains, God. And Lord, that by faith they would call upon your name. And Lord, as we minister last Sunday at church, it doesn't take a great quantity of faith. But Lord, even the faith that is so small, God, you will honor, Lord. And so today I pray that God, you would raise the sick up off the bed of the affliction. And God, that you would bring divine healing upon their body in their life and God until that healing may come that God you would bring grace that would be sufficient 
to meet every need. And Lord, today we look up those families that are hurting, those families that are heartbroken today. And Lord, you would wrap your arms of love and compassion around them. And Lord, you would speak peace to their life. And Lord, bring a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, we thank you and praise you for it today. And we thank you for hearing and answering prayer. And we thank you for all your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Thank you, God, for just being you. And we love you with all that we have today. And we ask it in the mighty, precious, most wonderful, most awesome name that there is, the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles right there where you are today, we're going to be ministering from the book of 1 John, the first letter that John wrote. John, who was considered the apostle of love. The Bible uh, speaks of him as the one that the disciple whom Jesus loved. And John had a lot to write about loving the Lord and loving each other with a brotherly love. And this morning, we're going to be in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. And John is writing a whole lot here about really about fellowship. About fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Honey, there's only one way to have fellowship with Him today. And that's by the blood that He shed at Calvary's Hill. And John would write in 1 John chapter 2 verse 6. He said, He that saith that he abides in Him in Christ ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Amen. In other words, as Jesus walked. And John here in this one verse, he lays he lays the rubber down right down on the road and he puts the shoe leather to the pathway as he ministers this one verse and he says, if you say that you abide in Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, yeah. If you say that you've been born again, right. if you profess that you belong to right. the Lord, Amen. if you Amen. profess that you've been born again, if you profess that you've been saved, then your life ought to line up with the things of the Word of God, that you ought to walk in this life, Amen. you ought to live this life, even as Jesus walked, even as Jesus yeah. lived Amen. when He was upon this earth, I believe that John is speaking here uh, of the time when Jesus uh, in all its humanity uh, as he lived upon this earth, uh, he was very God, but he was very man. Amen. He was very God in all his deity, uh, but he was clothed in humanity. He was clothed in flesh. Uh, he knew no sin. Uh, he was guiltless uh, in his earthly life uh, when he lived some uh, 33 years upon this earth. Now some would say yeah but he was God in flesh. That's why he could be perfect. Well he was perfect on the God side of him. Yeah. But Jesus was tempted in his humanity as you and I are tempted by the devil. But he overcame Amen. those temptations and Jesus could have very well in all his humanity gave in to the wiles of the devil. He could have gave in to sin yeah. in his humanity but he walked in accordance to the will of God Amen. and the power of Almighty God. Amen. Jesus, when he walked upon this earth in his earthly humanity, he walked a life of obedience to God Almighty. And let me say this morning, his walk is a pattern to you and I today yeah. to which we can walk. And today, John said, if you say with your lips, and you confess with your mouth uh, that you abide in Amen. Him, uh, then your life uh, ought to line up with that profession. Uh, you, if you say you're saved today, uh, you ought to live like a Christian. Uh, you ought to live like you belong to Christ. Uh, that's the reason much of the world today uh, doesn't want what the, some of the church proclaims uh, because we got folks in the church today uh, that profess one thing, uh, yet their daily living says another thing. Uh, they say oh, in, in the church meeting, I abide in Him. But yet Monday through Saturday, they are living a different, totally different walk. And they're not walking like Jesus walked. Amen. And honey, if I just lived a Sunday 
every religion uh, and wanted to live any other way I wanted to. Uh, honey, that's not salvation. Uh, salvation is a 24-hour day, uh, seven day a week. Uh, hallelujah. Walk with the Lord. Uh, it's a pattern that we live. Uh, and so John would say, if you say that you abide in Him, uh, you should also walk uh, as Jesus walked uh, on this earth when He lived here. Uh, and so uh, there's uh, many things, Brother Donnie, that we can say uh, yeah. of how Jesus walked. Uh, he walked in love. Uh, he walked in holiness. Uh, he walked in purity. Uh, he walked in righteousness. Yeah. Uh, in His humanity side, uh, Jesus walked in pure life uh, and uh, acted like He belonged to the Lord. Uh, but I want to thank a few things this morning uh, that Jesus walked uh, when He walked upon this earth. Uh, and so also we ought to walk uh, the same way. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I'm not talking about sinless perfection uh, because there's not one of us today uh, under the sound of our voice uh, that has ever lived a completely, totally perfect life. Amen. Hallelujah. We found the Lord uh, and we come short of the glory of God. Uh, but I'm talking about today if you have a heart that is totally surrendered uh, and a heart that is totally committed and dedicated to the Lord. Sure, your feet are going to slip at times, but if you have a heart toward the Lord and you love Him and you want to serve Him completely, the Holy Spirit is going to move in and convict you and going to set you in the right direction if you'll submit to Him and let Him order your footsteps. Because the Bible says the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by the Lord. And so if you say that you are abide in Him. You ought to also walk as Jesus Amen. walked. Amen. One thing that Jesus did, He walked up on this earth. One way that He walked, He walked to please God. And you and I today ought to walk to please God. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 8 29, He that sent me is with me, He said. And He said, The Father has not left me alone. Right. And Jesus said, For I do always uh, those things uh, that please him. And you and I ought to carry the same testimony. I've been born from above. If I say that I abide in him, I ought to walk in this life uh, not to please man and not to please women, uh, not to please anybody that's around me, uh, but I ought to walk to please God uh, and not be conformed to this world, uh, but be transformed uh, by the renewal of my mind that I may be acceptable to him and word acceptable means that we be well pleasing to the Lord and the ultimate purpose of Jesus in his humanity when he walked upon this earth was to please God and to accomplish God's will and honey you and I today ought to have the same desire that we walk and please God that's our purpose Amen. If you say you abide in Him, you ought to walk to please God. You ought to talk to please God. The things you do and the speech that comes off your lips ought to be pleasing to the Lord. And the deeds that you do and the works that you do ought to be pleasing to the Lord. And many today, they make it their aim to please those that are around us. But Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 that no man that, that, that wars in this spiritual warfare entangles himself again with the affairs of this Amen. life. Hallelujah! That he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Honey, when you got saved, if you say you abide in him, yeah. you got enlisted in an army. You're Amen. now a soldier of the army of the Lord. And I can't think of any good soldier that has ever signed up for the army. Uh, every soldier that's good, uh, good soldier that I've met uh, has faithfully served uh, and dedicated yeah. their life uh, to the army and to the warfare. And you and I today as soldiers of Christ, uh, we ought to walk like Jesus walked uh, to please God the Father. We ought to walk in this life to please Him. Amen. John said, if you say you abide in Him, uh, 
and you should so walk as Jesus walked. Amen. Not Amen. only that, but Jesus not only walked to please God, but Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And you and I today are to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We fail to remember many times that Jesus had to have the power of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Jesus never performed one miracle until he went down to the Jordan River and John the Baptist baptized him. And in Matthew chapter 3, the Bible says when Jesus was baptized, the Bible says that he went up immediately out of the water and the word of God says the heavens were opened up unto him and the Holy Spirit of God descended in the form of a dove and the Holy Spirit came upon him and from that moment on the next three and a half years or so of the ministry of Jesus upon this earth he was filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. and power and he went about and he healed the sick and he opened blinded eyes and he opened their ears and he made the lame to walk and made the dumb to talk Amen. he had the spirit of God upon him somebody say well he was God the son I'm talking about his humanity I'm talking about his earthly life I'm talking about walking as Jesus walked and Jesus went down to the synagogue as his custom was in Luke chapter 4 and Jesus stood up and he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has, he has sent me to heal the broken hearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind and to set in liberty them that are bruised Jesus moved and Jesus walked and Jesus operated in the power of the Holy Spirit in his earthly ministry and Peter would say in Acts 10 38 that God is the one who anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all A-L-L healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him I tell you today Jesus if Jesus had to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit what does that say about you and I today you and I need to walk like Jesus walked and we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit Spirit. Here's what Jesus said to you and I today, the church, as he left this earth and getting ready to go up and ascend to the Father's right hand after he was resurrected. Jesus said in Mark 16 verse 15, he said, Go ye, that's you and me, into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news to every creation. Amen. He said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not, Jesus said, shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them, these signs shall follow them, that believe, he said, in my name, they shall cast out devils, demons, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover yeah. and the Bible says uh, that after the Lord had spoken to them uh, he was received up into heaven uh, and sat on the right hand of God uh, he sat down because his earthly work was finished uh, and the Bible says and they went forth uh, yeah. and they preached everywhere uh, I would today uh, that we would get preachers who would preach everywhere uh, and yeah. preach the gospel the good news uh, don't add to it. Don't take away from it, Amen. but preach the gospel everywhere. And the Bible, what I like about it, says the Lord working with them and confirming the word, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Let me tell you something today. If signs are not following the preaching of the word, I have to question whether the word is being preached. Amen. But the only way that you can be a witness to the Lord and I don't know why that you can walk victoriously is to walk like Jesus.
Jesus did and walked in the power of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Jesus said in Acts 1 8, you and I shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. My friend, we ought to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Not only did Jesus walk to please God, and not only did he walk in this life to, to, in the power of the Holy Spirit, but Jesus walked in the teachings of God's holy word. Now in Jesus' day when he came, the word of God was the law of Moses, and Jesus walked in that law, and he kept that law, and he fulfilled the law of God. He, he walked in the word of God, and every Everything that Jesus did was in accordance to God's word. As a matter of fact, Jesus is the word today. And let me say this. He said, I came to do the will of my Father. And today we ought to say, I'm here today upon this earth to do the will of my Father. God Almighty, Jesus said, I've come to do the will of him that sent me. And he said in John 44, 34, he said, and to finish his work, glory to God. And that's what I want to do in my earthly life. Amen. Should I be taken out of here into eternity tomorrow or today, or whether it be 20, 30 years from now, until my last breath, I want to finish the work that God Amen. has called me to do. I want to walk in the power of the Spirit. I want to walk to please God. Amen. I want to walk like Jesus walked. Hallelujah. I count at the cost. I want to take up my cross daily and follow him. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said in John 8, verse 38, he said, I came down from heaven. He said, not to do my own will, but the will of him that Amen. sent me. He walked in accordance to the teaching of the word of God. And Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible tells me that Jesus came forth. He was sent God in the fullness of time Amen. and he was made of woman that means he was God in flesh he was born of woman but he was conceived by the Holy Ghost but he was made under the law meaning that he was subject to the law yeah. the law was God's word in that day he, he was subject to the law now the law demanded righteousness and no one could ever obey the law in its totality and so that law ministered death. But Galatians chapter 4 verse 5 in the next verse says that Christ came to redeem Amen. those that were under the law. Amen. Christ came to this earth and he kept the law perfectly as no one else had ever done. And that my friend is how we are redeemed. He fulfilled the word of God. He fulfilled the law. And whereas you and I be we even broke one law. We've broken them all. But Jesus came and abolished the penalty of the law and took it out of the way. Hallelujah. And my friend today, he stands before God as our righteousness. Now we ought to walk in the teachings of the new covenant, the word of God. Hallelujah. Jesus walked in holiness. Jesus walked in purity. And with our faith ever maintained in Christ uh, and his finished work at Calvary. We too can walk this pathway Amen. of victory. Uh, Jesus stands before God uh, as our representative, uh, as our great high priest. Uh, he stands as our advocate. Hallelujah. Amen. And today, uh, if you say you abide in him, uh, you ought to also walk uh, as Jesus walked. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the last thing this morning, uh, I want to minister and Jesus not only walked uh, to please God, he not only walked in the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, not only did he walk in the teachings of God's Word, uh, and not only did he heed to those teachings, uh, but Jesus walked, and this is what I like. Uh, I thought I sat there at my desk as the Lord was giving me these things uh, yesterday in my study. Uh, I began to think about this, and I just be, yeah, uh, one of those moments, Brother Donnie, I just overwhelmed by the power of the Holy Spirit when I began to think about when Jesus walked upon this earth.
earth. Jesus walked in compassion. He walked in love upon this earth. He walked with such a zeal and such a desire that he wanted to see souls saved. The Bible tells me in Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 that when Jesus got before the multitudes, he looked upon them and he saw, he saw that there was something empty about them. He saw that they were full of wickedness and yeah. evil yeah. and he didn't come to judge them. He didn't come to condemn them. Their sin had already condemned them. He didn't come in that manner. Now one day he will sit on the throne as judge but that's not his work right now. And so he didn't come to bring them down and to beat them down. And many times we as the church today we get so high and puffed up and lifted it up and we look at those that are bound by sin and we try to kick them on down a little further and we don't realize that Satan has already got them kicked down and he don't need no help from us to kick them down but Jesus walked up on this earth with compassion and you and I need to walk in that same compassion and the Bible says that Jesus when he saw the multitudes the Bible says he was moved with compassion uh, on them because that they fainted uh, and the Bible says they were scattered abroad uh, as sheep uh, having no shepherd uh, meaning that they had no leadership uh, they had no spiritual leadership uh, they couldn't even go down to the temple and find uh, relief and release from their burdens uh, they couldn't even go to the house of God to find uh, the answer that they were looking for uh, and so Jesus came uh, and he messed up all of the religious leaders all of their traditions and ways he came and turned the tables over in the temple he tore down their religious structures and we got people today in denominations that'll say if you don't belong to us you're not right. saved right. if you don't belong to us right. and our organization you're not going to make it to heaven yeah. my friend we need to stop that stuff Amen. and Amen. we need to walk like Jesus walked and walk in compassion and have a zeal and a desire. It's not about my church. It's not about your church. It's not about the church down the road. It's not about religion. But we need to have such a zeal in our hearts and such a passion as Jesus did to weep over. I wonder, all, I wonder how many today that's listening. How, how long has it been since you just got down and poured out your heart before the Lord and you wept and cried in tears of sorrow because a child was lost without the Lord or your family was lost without the Lord or your husband or your wife and he really got down and was moved with compassion and got down and cried tears saying Lord save my family we need to be moved as Jesus was with compassion and Jesus said to his disciples hallelujah he said the harvest truly is blessed, but the labors are few. He said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors Amen. to the harvest. Amen. My friend, this was the humanity of Jesus as he saw the plight of all the sinners. He was moved with an attitude of compassion. He was moved many times, the Bible says, with tears because he knew the end result Amen. of all of their rejection of him as the sacrifice that takes away all the sin and his work at Calvary. And he knew that their end result would be an eternity in an awful place of torment called hell. And he looked around and he saw there was no spiritual leadership. I wonder how many today are moved with compassion when we begin to think about the lost souls that are around us. Are we moved enough to pray harder? Are we moved enough to share a little more about his love? Jesus said the harvest, that's the souls that need to be saved. That harvest is plenteous. But he said the laborers, that's the preachers of righteousness and salvation. The laborers are few. The church today ought to walk in compassion.
passion as Jesus walked. We ought to have a, such a desire, a zeal, and a passion as Jesus had to want seeing lost men and women be saved and gloriously changed from the power of sin. I want to say one more time before we pray. I want to say and utter the words that John said today. If you say you abide in him, you ought to also walk as Jesus walked upon this earth. You ought to walk like Jesus and conduct your life as Jesus did in this life. Today, let me ask you this question. And I, I ask it with that compassion, moved with compassion. Do you know today that you know that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you've been saved, that you've been born again? I'm not asking you, have you had such and such done or have you did this and that? I'm asking you, have you had an experience? I'm not asking you today if you've been moved with emotions, but I'm asking you, have you been changed? By an experience. My friend today. Jesus stands before you. With arms open wide. Saying come home. Come home. It's time today. To come home. There's only one way. To have victory in your life. And that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't make it into heaven. Unless. You've been born again. And Jesus will save your soul today. Right there where you are, you can pray the prayer of faith and the prayer of repentance. And Jesus can wash away all sin. And they are cast as far as the east is from the west. And God said, I'll never remember them again. And today, I also want to say this invitation is for those. You've once been enlightened. You were saved. Something's happened and you've wandered away from the Lord. You don't have this passion, this zeal, and this excitement and enthusiasm that you once had when you received that glorious gift from the Lord. Something has came in and has distracted you and moved you away and broken that fellowship with the Lord. But today God is sending this invitation your way as well. Saying today that that fellowship can be restored once again. And today you can be renewed and revived and restored. If you just call upon him. The devil will tell you he don't love you anymore. He'll tell you that there's no more hope for you and it's finished. And I've come by to tell you today he still loves you. And he wants to bring you back in. So as we pray today, you pray right there what you desire the Lord to do in your heart and your life. And trust Him in faith, believing that He'll redo, He'll do it. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name of your Son, Jesus. Our only source of help. Our only source of victory. Our only source of blessing. And I pray today, God, as I believe souls are crying out to you, I pray, Lord, that you would move, Lord, upon them as your heart, God, is still moving today with compassion. God, I pray both first and foremost for those that are not saved, that today will be the day of new beginning. Lord, that they'll be made a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. And they'll be changed. Lord, I pray today for those that have wandered away from you. They don't have that power like they once had. They don't have that excitement and they've allowed the things of the world to come in. But God, today you can restore that power. You can restore that joy and that peace. If they'll just surrender all their whole life to you. God, we thank you and praise you for it today. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen and amen. Praise God. We pray today that his word and his strength has been a blessing to you today. 
and that the word of God has touched you and changed you in some way. And we love you today and we appreciate you tuning into the broadcast. We'll be back next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock right here on 99 Point One. Tell your friends and family and neighbors to tune in as we try to distribute the mighty gospel of the word of God. And we love you today. And once again, we invite you to come out and be with us at Grace Union. If you don't have a home church to attend, we'll, we'll treat you so many ways you'll like every one of them. And we love you today. We pray God's richest blessings upon you. And until next week, unless the Lord returns or we go by the way of grave, we'll be back here. And until then, keep looking up, church. Our redemption is drawing nigh. May God richly bless you.